morning, everybody. Uh, my name is Joe Hotel, and uh, thank you, Russ, very much for inviting me today. Uh, I am no longer a Democrat, but he did say this is for progressive, so I guess you can consider me a progressive as well. Uh, as many of you know, I have run for public office in the past. Actually, 20 years ago, this year was my first time I ran for city council in the very same race for the unexpired term. And I uh, did very well, actually. I had about 11,000 votes, and I raised $1,000. Uh, maybe a little bit of an infamous race for some of you, but regardless, uh, I've always been an advocate for fairness and equality in this community, and I will continue to do so. Uh, I am a 45-year resident of Clintonville. I grew up on Clinton Heights, attended at Mackle Conception, and graduated from Bishop Watterson High School. And I attended Youngstown State University after that. I uh, played on the college uh, junior varsity basketball team there as a walk-on. Uh, I live now on West Cook Road, so if anybody wants to knock on my door and ask me questions about anything, feel free to do so. You can't miss it, I'll have my yard signs out there. I'm out there until, until election time because uh, the Supreme Court ruling allows for anybody to put that uh, First Amendment right and freedom of speech out their yard, so they're going to stay there. My neighbors may not like it, but it's going to continue. <laughs> I'm one of 11 children, actually, too, and uh, my father was a carpenter and uh, also became a general uh, superintendent for several uh, construction management firms here in Columbus, Ohio. I, uh, uh, one of the things that I could actually do, I have been uh, a blue-collar worker for 25 years of my construction career. I worked for Alfred Incorporated, and uh, for the last 10 years, I've had the honor of making sure that uh, I create a safe work environment for the construction workers uh, throughout Central Ohio. As a safety manager, I've worked on $300 million plus jobs. I've over overseen the safety of approximately 350 workers on those projects. And uh, I will be uh, currently working at Ohio University on a student housing job that will be done here in about three weeks. Thank God, because I've been actually uh, living down there during the week and then just coming home on the weekend has been pretty tough on my family and so forth. I have two grown children. Uh, both of them went to close public schools, and my wife and I have been married now for 28 years, and I have a three-year-old grandson, so I am the senior candidate in this two-way race. <laughs> Needless to say, and I'm very proud of that, because I think experience matters, folks. I think life experience matters. Uh, what I've been through raising my children and so forth, the times of issues that have occurred throughout my lifetime, I think it's very important for somebody, especially with the current events that are taking place in our, in our country right now, in terms of poverty and income inequality, uh, police issues and such, I think it's very important that we have people with life experiences. So uh, it's one of the reasons I'm running. Some of the issues, I hope you look at my, my literature, but uh, I have been uh, a proponent of trying to uh, get city council and the city uh, charter review commission to enact a minimum wage uh, established for the citizens of Columbus just over a year ago for ten dollars an hour. I am currently now uh, considering eleven dollars an hour. It's been fourteen months, so you get a dollar dollar pay raise already. So seriously, though, uh, we have one hundred seventy thousand people in this city who are considered persons of poverty. That's one out of five people, and. Throughout the state government, uh, Democrats in the state legislature, Congress, everybody supports the minimum wage increase. And we are, we can do it here in Columbus, just as about 20 other cities throughout the country have done so. And it's kind of upsetting to me that we have seven Democrats on council who do not support this and can actually, they could have put this on the charter in order for us to vote on this, let the people decide, or it can be legislated. So, one of that's a really big issue of mine, uh, to help eliminate poverty, help people to have an opportunity to better themselves, pay for bills and such. I am also, I'm also, uh, for the last couple of months, uh, I have worked at Mount Carmel West Hospital throughout my construction career, so for probably five or six years. And many of you know they are moving out to Grove City. So they're going to open up about 400 patient rooms there. So I have sent letters to every every uh, elected official from the federal, state, local level about proposing a public rehab detox center. I also, I really want to thank uh, Mike Spinziano, who's here today, for his support on this. Mike and I have talked. Uh, Andy Ginther, Ken Paul, who works for Andy, uh, we have talked as well, and I really appreciate them helping me through with this. 
and I have spoken to uh, Governor Kasich's office, both parties. This is uh, an issue that affects everybody in this room. Okay, it's, and I, this is a personal matter for me too. I have a daughter who's a recovering drug addict, and I can tell you that it is a horrific experience as a parent to watch one of your children to go through something like this. And there is a lack of mental health facilities in this city and drug rehab facilities. So, I, hope I, can get this I, know, I see Russ coming out there, it's almost like he's holding a car. So, uh, but I got a lot more to talk about. I hope you take a look at my literature. And I'd be more than happy to talk about some things. I got some great ideas in terms of tax abatements, creating jobs, uh, affordable housing, uh, you name it. Please uh, you know, ask your questions to me, and I'd be more than happy to fill you in. Thanks. Thanks, Joe. Thank you.